Have you ever seen ripples on the beach? It doesn't take much imagination to see that these ripples are created by waves and tides as they roll over the sand. Sand dunes form through very similar processes, natural forces like the wind. The wind pushes and pools sediment along the surface. The dynamics of this process are complex. The structures that emerge are not predetermined. They depend on the grains of the sediment itself. Let's focus on sand dunes for a moment. Wind blows the grains along the surface. Due to the shapes of the grains and all of their irregularities, sooner or later they will start to clump together and pile up. The pile grows over time as more grains are added. But sooner or later, the pile grows too big. Gravity causes the grains at the top of the, the slope to slide down the slip face, creating the classic dune structure. Over time, as the wind continues to blow, the dunes will migrate across the landscape. Clearly, if we look at the world today, there are many places where sediment is in a near constant state of motion and agitation. In fact, this has always been the case. It is the same today as it was one billion years ago. But how do we know? We know about the motion of sediment in the past from sedimentary structures. Sedimentary structures are large, visible, three-dimensional features of sedimentary rocks. These features are related to processes that affected sediment prior to its lithification. In other words, sedimentary structures are structures created by physical and biological processes that affect sediment before it becomes sedimentary rock. Wind and wave are just two of many processes that create sedimentary structures. Let's begin by focusing on ripple marks, something familiar. Ripple marks are textbook example of sedimentary structures. Just like the ripples on the beach and the sand dunes in the desert, ripple marks form when water or wind pushes sediment in one direction. Such ripple marks are very useful. If a geologist discovers ripple marks, they can determine the direction that the wind was blowing or the water was flowing in the past. Cross bedding is a related sedimentary structure. Cross beds also form under wind and water currents. These structures form because dunes and ripples migrate over time. Once a sand grain is blown to the top of a dune, it may fall on the downwind side of the peak. Over time, more grains will join in, and the dune will migrate in the direction of wind. Cross beds track the movement of the structure in the direction of wind. There are also sedimentary structures that tell us about the movement of underwater currents. Graded bedding is a sedimentary structure where grains are sorted by size. On the bottom of a stratum, you find the largest grains. On the top of the stratum, you see the smallest grains. In other words, the particles, the grains, the clasts were deposited in order of grain size. The large grains were deposited first, followed by the smaller grains. Graded beds are created by turbidity currents. Turbidity is the presence of sediment in water. The higher the turbidity, the more sediment is present. You can think of a turbidity current like an underwater avalanche of water and sediment. The avalanche will move downslope and deposit sediment at the bottom. At the bottom, the turbidity current loses its energy and the sediment falls out of the water. The largest, heaviest grains are the first grains to fall out of suspension. 
they are deposited on the ground first. Smaller grains, which have more buoyancy and require less energy to move, remain in the water longer before they ultimately settle on top of the larger grains. The end result is a layer of rock with the largest grains on the bottom and the smallest grains on top. A related group of sedimentary structures are created when sediment is removed from a surface as wind or water moves over it. We call these sedimentary structures flutes. When flutes are filled by sediment, then flute casts are created. The two are always found together. Like ripples, flutes and flute casts are meaningful discoveries. A geologist can use the orientation of flutes and flute casts in order to determine the direction of the wind or water current that produced them. Of course, there are many other sedimentary structures that aren't produced by wind or water currents. Desiccation cracks, or mud cracks, form when fine grain sediment dries out and contracts, creating fractures. Due to this fracturing, the sediment ends up looking like broken polygonal plates. The spaces between these plates may be filled with other sediment or minerals, preserving the mud cracks in sedimentary rock strata. Of course, you've probably seen mud cracks before. They aren't uncommon in the summer months and many films and cartoons use desiccation cracks to depict hot, dry conditions. After all, how would you know that Simba was in a harsh environment if not for mud cracks? If there is an opposite of mud cracks, it would probably be raindrop impressions. Just as they sound, these sedimentary structures form when rain falls on soft sediment, like mud, and the drops create little craters. If the craters are filled in by sediment deposited on top of the layer, the raindrop impressions are preserved in the sedimentary rock. Raindrop impressions, mud cracks, ripples, crossbeds, graded beds. All of these sedimentary structures are good indicators of depositional environments. The discovery of a sedimentary structure can provide a powerful clue about the environment in which the rock formed, whether it be a beach, a river, a lake, or any other setting where sediment is deposited and eventually turns into rock.